Did you know that homosexuality was widely accepted in ancient China? How did this impact the lives of the concubines who lived in luxury but were often treated as mere objects? What was the brutal selection process like? What were the love lives of male concubines like in the ancient Chinese empire? Join us as we explore the lonely and depressing lives of concubines in the Chinese empire. In China's Ming Dynasty, despite the Hongwu Emperor's success in bringing about social stability, his use of concubines highlights the suppression and tyranny that existed in the empire. While concubines were above servants, they were inferior to wives and were primarily used for reproduction. The emperor had strict control over their lives and revived the tradition of sacrificing them upon his death. He also commanded subjects to subject their daughters as concubines. Discover the secrets of the Forbidden City where thousands of women were housed and eunuchs guarded the inner court to protect the imperial line. In 1366, the Hongwu Emperor built a majestic palace to establish his imperial authority and protect his family. The Ming Palace was constructed in a swift two-year period and became the Emperor's new seat in Nanjing. However, it was the later construction of the Forbidden City under the Yongle Emperor that would serve as the capital for the Ming and Qing dynasties of China. Throughout the centuries, the Forbidden City housed thousands of concubines who served the various emperors that lived there, adding to its historical and cultural significance. The Forbidden City, built in 1420 under the Ming Dynasty, served the Imperial Palace for over 500 years. It was a symbol of imperial power and housed the emperor, empress, and concubines. Eunuchs played a significant role in ensuring the legitimacy of the imperial line by guarding the inner court. The imperial harem housed thousands of women, with some emperors keeping up to 9,000 concubines. The hierarchy of the harem placed the empress at the top, followed by consorts. The empress had held significant authority over all concubines, maids, and eunuchs who served the royal family. She was venerated as the mother of the world, and the emperor was considered the father of heaven. The empress was only considered lesser than the emperor and his mother, the empress dowager. The fight for attention wasn't just among the ruling class, but also within the walls of the harem where the emperor's consorts and concubines engaged in a complex and cutthroat battle for the coveted position of the emperor's favorite. The hierarchy of the imperial harem in China was a complex and competitive system. After the empress, the next rank was held by the consorts who weren't officially married to the emperor but were gifted or claimed by him as partners. The concubines held the next rank and their number could vary from 3 to 5 depending on the emperor. Due to the fierce competition among them, intrigue and bickering were rampant in the Forbidden City. During the Qing Dynasty, their activities were monitored by the eunuchs and any lady the emperor visited would be subject to jealous rivalries. Concubines spent their days applying makeup, practicing arts and socializing, but love was forbidden and they weren't allowed to communicate with the outside world. Concubines in the Forbidden City had few ways to escape. Some could wait until the emperor lost interest and retire with a pension, while others were gifted to foreign rulers. Very few dared attempt to escape, and if caught, faced execution. Despite the difficulties, some continued their servitude as royal maids or became nuns. Empress Wu Zetian was a rare exception, rising from rural service as a concubine to Wu the successor to Emperor Taizong. Serving the imperial family was a challenging and lonely life for most. In ancient China, the competition among concubines was intense, and jealousy and politics were rampant in the imperial palace. Beauty, which was the primary criterion for selection, was more of a curse than a blessing. The lives of concubines were full of injustice, and they had to endure a lot of humiliation and mistreatment. Some tried to rebel against their fate, but most chose more extreme approaches such as the Iranian plot where 16 concubines attempted to attack the emperor and were executed. The life of concubines in ancient China highlights the deep-rooted communalism and gender inequality in Chinese society. It's a reminder of the struggles that women have faced throughout history and the importance of fighting for gender equality and women's rights.